Hello and welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. I'm your host, Gabe Peterson, and this is the place investors go to gain actionable advice, learn about current market trends, and hear war stories from other professional investors out there in the field today. Before we get started, I have two quick housekeeping items for you. First, if you like this episode, we would very much appreciate a like, subscribe, and share. It is the best way to support the show and keep it running far into the future. Second, if you're a new investor looking to get started in real estate or an experienced investor looking to take your investing to the next level, I've created an ebook just for you that will cover how to find deals that are actually deals, how to finance those deals with little to no money down, and how to exit those deals for maximum value. On top of that, I throw in an insane amount of free bonuses that you'll have access to once you buy the ebook. All I charge is our admin costs to keep this show running. So if you're serious about real estate investing and want to create both active and passive income as an investor, head on over to the website at therealestateinvestingclub.com and click on the button that says, get the ebook in the upper right-hand corner to grab yourself a copy. With that said, let's dive right in. Today, we have a very special guest with us ready to drop some investor knowledge on you. So buckle up, grab your pen and paper and enjoy the ride. All right, we're back with another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. Today we have Bill Gross with us. Bill is a broker associate with EXP Realty, specializing in probate and legal real, real estate. He's a certified probate expert and can be found at the Stanley Moss Courthouse daily to work with attorneys, petitioners, clients, investors, and other real estate professionals to help them solve their real estate problems. I'm super excited to have Bill here because we haven't talked probate yet. So Bill, thank you very much for showing up. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thanks for having me. Awesome, man. I love it. And you're down there in sunny, uh, sunny California. Yeah, um, a mile from the ocean. Same coast, same time zone. I love that because then we, we feel each other. <laughs> uh, I told you before we got on the show, we always start with stories. Um, so why don't you take us to yours? How'd you get started in real estate? You know, two, two parts of that uh, story. One is so uh, when I was graduate college, my father was an attorney and he had a lot of successful, he had some successful clients and some not so successful, but I had a chance to go out and meet with five or 10 of his most successful clients, go out to lunch, learn about what they did, why they did it. And the one pattern I saw consistently, no matter what business they were in, their wealth was all created in real estate. If you're a manufacturer, it was the building and their house. And if it was an insurance broker, it was his office building and his house. And so I realized quickly, you know, why not, why play around? Why not go right to the real estate? And then my brother was a loan officer back in the day when Great Western Bank was a big lender and uh, kind of tricked me into being his partner. Kind of, we went to lunch a couple of times and playing along like uh, I was uh, his partner in the business and it was fun. And I said, well, this is great. More fun than to come to the office work I'd done for some big companies. So I started in real estate in 1986 and haven't looked back since. Nice. I love it. 1986. That is uh, the year I was born. So you've been practicing <laughs> real estate for 34 years right now. There you go. There you go. I love it. <laughs> 36. Um, don't cheat me those last two, man. They've been, they've been great. The last two have been my best ever. So don't cheat me those two. <laughs> you said 36? 36. Yeah. Since the 86. Oh man. Am I getting my wrong? My birthday <laughs> yeah. right? I guess, yeah. I guess I am. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's great. So I, you know, I love hearing people who kind of grew up in, you know, surrounded by real estate. Um, I'm always jealous when I hear that kind of story because, you know, if you had that from an early age, you really understood the importance of real estate. Um, or not really the importance, but the the efficacy in uh, in creating your own you know your own nest egg, your own wealth story. Um, so you had that. That's that's really cool to hear. Yeah, yeah. From the very beginning, I, I saw that, and that's been the goal. And to this day, you know, I'm a real estate broker, and I list property and sell for investors and such. But I'm also looking for my own investments um, along the way. And th I found the best way to find deals is being in the business every day, and then picking up one or two that I like, you know, for my deal, my own business. Yep. And that seems uh, that seems to be kind of uh, not a contentious issue, but something people talk about um, as investors, you can you can do it without a license or you can get a license. And a lot of people have opinions one side or the other. I don't you know, I don't have any strong opinion whether you should get a bro uh, brokered or a license or not. I don't have one, but um, it makes sense to get them. What uh, what kind of opinion do you have one way or the other? I'm strongly in favor of getting it. I think that the only reason not to is I think you can cheat people if you have a license and not be held accountable. Uh, and I just rather not cheat people. I find I can make plenty of money by, by serving people, by being fair, being honest. 
it, it, the challenge is if I meet somebody as an agent, I have an obligation to them to represent their best interests. And mm. yet that's how I also make money is helping them represent their best interests. So I don't find it to be a limitation. I, and I find some of the people who say it is, I just kind of question how they do business because um, there's plenty of opportunity, you know, more opportunity than I can work on. I work all day long and then you know, I've got a bunch of hot leads on the desk. I'll put a couple on escrow and I'll work on a couple more, you know, on Monday. So gotcha. I, I don't see it as a limitation. I feel like it's a, it's a superpower as an agent. I have access to documents I don't have otherwise, information, uh, super keys and boxes and cooperation with you know, a million realtors around the country. So I find it to be a great asset uh, that I use. And as long as I hold myself to high standards, I don't see a problem with it. Gotcha. Yep. I love it. And I, that is uh, the recurring kind of theme that I hear um, from brokers themselves is just, you know, you have access to that information, you have access to the MLS um, and that itself kind of helps out. But um, I, I mean, talk I, to investors every day and I always, I always ask them where they find the deals. I always ask that question because this business is about finding deals in my, at least in my opinion, it's all about finding deals. So I always ask an investor, you know, where do you find your deals? And they'll talk about the stray one or two, but when you really break down their business over the course of a year, the answer almost always 80% is on the MLS. Hmm. Now, now they look at it differently, they find different things, they look at properties that people passed on, whatever, but they, the, the origin is on the MLS. And so it just seems that that's the most powerful place to find the deals. And so I might as well be there as actively as I can. Hmm. That's interesting. I actually, I've heard the, the contrary of that. I've heard the majority of investors find their deals off the MLS um, because that's where, you know, usually the, the better deals are. Um, but I mean, I guess, I guess, Whatever you choose to do, whatever method you choose, um, if you work it, that method is going to work for you. So I guess that's the lesson mm -hmm. there. Yeah. I mean, I um, talk to, agent, to investors as well, and they love off-market. They always ask you for off-market. They talk about the off-market deals. But when I, when I really break down and, and get them behind the scenes, uh, it's just still, I would say over 8% are, are in the MLS at one time or another. Maybe that's it. Maybe I'm talking to people who don't know the numbers. <laughs> I think that's it. I, or, or don't yeah. think about it. Like you, off the top of their head, they'll say it's off market. And they'll find, and then when they, well, okay, the last 10 deals you did, where'd they come from? And they go, well, this is MLS. Oh, that was MLS. So yeah. it, it, it's just, it, it came from a guy, but it was in the MLS. And the guy found it in the MLS and brought it to him. So it's the same thing. In my book. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, so I'm on the com commercial side. So I do mobile home and RV parks, and for mm. sure, I do not. You don't want to find something on market in commercial. Once it hits the market, then it's just right. it is not a deal. That is pretty guaranteed. Um, but for a residential, that that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, but you're here. You know, you have a specialty. I love it when people have specialties because that makes means you know they're a wealth of wisdom, they're a wealth of knowledge, um, and also they have a, a specific thing that they're here to talk about. And you are here to talk about probate. Yep. Um, probate is, you know, many people have heard about it. It is one of the most, um, effective ways, I guess, to, to generate leads for a business. Uh, it's also one of the kind of the gray areas. A lot of people don't really know how to do it correctly, um, how to do it ethically. So glad you're here to talk about it. Um, so why don't we just start, you know, not everyone knows what probate is. Why don't you just start there? What is probate and how does it fit in the, the real estate scheme? Sure. So probate is really when um, you, uh, your estate is suing, uh, being sued by the county basically to uh, figure out how your life savings is divvied up amongst uh, first creditors and taxes and then to whoever you want to leave it to. It's really not where you want to be ideally. Um, it, it, you really want to have a living trust where your assets are protected and then you can determine upon death you know, how things are distributed or upon incapacitation how they're distributed. If you don't have a living trust, then basically the state uh, via the county process will um, take your your uh, assets and follow some rules. Now, you might have a will and the state will look at the will and say, oh, this is how he wants it done. We'll follow the will as long as it's done right. Biggest misconception is they think a will avoids probate. It's the opposite. Wills are, are adjudicated or effectuated in probate court. And so what happens is uh, an advantage, I think, of or the opportunity in probate is you know the seller isn't just motivated they're gone so uh, typically that asset was appropriate for somebody and that person's not around anymore and so a very high percentage of them uh, need to tra transfer ownership one way or another so we all look for motivated sellers and by by far these sellers are always always motivated because they didn't buy the asset to have it they inherit it and don't really know what to do with it or don't really want it so um, there's different ways to approach it um, investors I think the number one source seems to be pre-probate. There's data where you can buy 
people deceit, uh, decedents and they cross-reference to ownership of property. There's a data source that will do that for you. And then they'll cross-reference that for uh, phone numbers or emails or addresses and a mail or call or email as appropriate to market to those people. They'll add that in as a piece of a multi-prong attack. Maybe they'll have probate plus distressed property or probate plus tax sales or whatever. And then um, in my business, I really look in the MLS for probate properties and I approach estates, I approach attorneys to represent them to list it. And then um, a, a percentage of properties are, are sold and then the court has to confirm the sale. And that's where I've really become a specialist in bringing investors in. There's about 50 a month in Los Angeles County. Now we're the largest county in the United States in this. Most counties it's more rare. But there's certain sales that the court has to approve during a certain process. And so the agents tend to try to sell it quickly, usually double end it to their own customer. But now you can walk into court if you're willing to pay more than that other party by at least 5% plus $500. You want to bring a cashier's check, you want to buy it, waiving contingencies, you can get a good deal sometimes. And so I represent investors that buy those properties about one, one or two times a month. Interesting. Okay. Um, so, you, I mean, that's a, that is a lot of info. I was trying to take some notes here so we can kind of, you know, deep dive into it, individual ones. Um, I'm going to start with where you started. Uh, you were talking about, you know, what probate is. It's when the, the county, you said sues. I didn't know that was the correct word to use, but essentially takes control of, you know, someone who's deceased, their assets, um, and figures out how to distribute them. And you said that it is the most, most motivated type of of client. And that, that makes a lot of sense because this person's passed away. And now people, you know, I, I saw this back when I was doing single family, um, for probate, a lot of people, you know, somebody passes away and they just don't want the property. Like it's, you, you don't think that as an investor, you always want properties, but these people don't want them. Um, it's, you know, it's just another headache to them. And so that is why they're motivated. So that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, there are so, also, and also think about when somebody passes, most commonly, it's a process. And so as we get older, they're not like, I'm sure in your business as an investor in mobile homes, like you want to be on top of the mobile home rental rates and the lease rates and the management. And the, but as you get older, they kind of neglect that they're making good money, good enough money. So you know, 10 years go by and that property is somewhat behind the times. So now do you want to take over that property? Uh, and then and maybe rehabilitate it? That's a lot of work. You might do that as an investor building portfolio. But as, a, as an heir, why not just take the money and put it in a more passive income type situation? And so usually these assets just aren't appropriate for the person who's going to inherit, let alone they don't want it. Yeah, that, yep, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I mean, it's just, it's just a headache uh, having to take care of multiple properties. So, mm -hmm. um, okay, so they're the most motivated. You said in order to find these deals, it sounded like skip tracing and email was, was a really effective way. Um, why, why email that, that in my experience, email has been one of the least effective ways to generate leads. Um, mm -hmm. and so I'm just curious why, why does that work for this type of, uh, of, uh, I guess asset or not asset class, but, um, lead. Well, let me go back and say there's services you can buy that data from. So you don't necessarily have to yourself take it and cross reference it or take it and skip trace. There are services that will sell you that data and they've done the skip tracing and you're paying oh, okay. them. Now, some people don't like the way they do it and they do a better job on their own. You know, data is obviously part of our business and part of all of our marketing strategies. As far as email, you know, I think it's certainly cheap to, to approach people via email. And so, you know, if you have, like in my case uh, in LA, you know, we have maybe 500 probate listings a month and sure, it's ineffective. Maybe only one or two percent respond, but two percent of five hundreds, you know, uh, ten. So it's worth you know throwing out that to get ten responses, perhaps, if yeah. you're effective. And then lastly, I would say you know email is part of uh, social media marketing as well. And so I, I think more and more our real estate marketing is going to multi-channel. You know, you can call, you can postcard, you can email, and mm. then you can we retarget via Facebook or Google ads. And, and try to get, you know, right to the people you're trying to get to. So it's a, it depends on how sophisticated your marketing is. Gotcha. That makes sense. Um, so you also mentioned going to the courthouse, like actually mm -hmm. to the court steps. And mm -hmm. it sounds like uh, doing a bid on this. This is something, obviously, probate is something I do not have a lot of experience in. Um, mm -hmm. So one side, you generate leads by buying this list and then you, you market to them. You email, you send direct mail, um, RVM, whatever it is, text marketing. 
you actually talk to the seller and uh, and see if they're interested in selling their property this other way um you mentioned the court how how does it get to the courthouse steps and um in what case do you market to the person and actually get the lead and then in what case are you actually buying it from the from the court so the courthouse steps normally refers to trustee sales or foreclosure sales this is different okay so i'm talking about actually going inside the court to the courtroom where the hearing on probate is occurring so what i did okay. For a couple of years, every day I went to court looking for particular um, types of hearings. And I would sit in court, number one, to learn the process. I'd see the attorneys, I'd see the judges, how petitions were handled, what rules they would accept, what rules they would bend or not bend. But occasionally I'd find a lead, like some, you know, you see the true attorneys fighting over who gets to be the petitioner and you know who gets to sell the property. And I would just contact, I'd make notes and contact both attorneys and say, hey, I see the conflict there, but I can act as an intermediary and sell the property and that way you can divvy up the money rather than the property and, and fighting over who writes the check for the property taxes, insurance goes away, I'll handle that for you. So I'll go to hearings and see that. And then, you know, as a real estate agent, you bump into people, you know, I'm in the meet the people business. So I meet investors there, I meet, um, you know, uh, uh, petitioners uh, for to be executor administrator of the estate. I meet attorneys there. Um, and so it was just a, a place to uh, generate business. It was my lead generation was going to court and meeting people every day. And, you know, how do you get hit by a car? You stand in traffic. So <laughs> I, I, I stood in traffic at the largest uh, probate court in America and made a great living at it until the uh, court closed down. But it was more about, but it also, and I, I do think um, one of the things that, that I always emphasize when I talk to agents is, it's not just about how to get the business, it's about how to learn to be an expert so people want to do business with you. And so one of the key things was watching those hearings, I became an expert. I, I've seen more court sales in LA County Court than any attorney, any agent, or any judge. Because a judge might see one a week, I would see five or seven a week. And after two years, I'd seen more than anybody combined, probably two or three people. And I'd see things, people would say, well, you can't do this. Well, I've seen that done twice. I saw it done by this judge <laughs> and by that judge. So that, that becomes viable to unwinding problems um, on, on a probate case. Awesome. I love it. And just outside of probate, um, being, I love that you said that because being an expert at one specific strategy, one specific, you know, transaction type, there's a lot that goes to that because once you're, once you are the expert, everybody comes to you about it. Um, I mean, you have the, the, uh, the URL, the LA probate expert. So, uh, I'm sure everybody comes to you for probate cases. I love it. <laughs> well, not everybody, but enough to thank God. Um, you know, I do feel like in marketing, you want to have one thing that you're positioned for. We think that, well, that eliminates all these other things. Mm. And it's the opposite. People, when they realize I'm a probate expert, they assume I can, they know I can sell their house. I sell 30 a year. Of course, I can sell yours. That's easy. You don't have two attorneys fighting. You don't have this or that. Yeah, I can sell your house. That's that's a lot easier than what I do on a normal basis. So I think that having that expertise um, gives you a chance to talk to more people. I go to real estate network events. I feel like the prettiest girl at the prom and everybody wants to go home with me because <laughs> they want to learn about probate. And, and the truth is it is important. It, it, it's something to learn about. And I do feel like I'm valuable enough to help people. But uh, it, 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 part of just the marketing of getting people to talk to you. And that's, that's what marketing is really about. Yep. I love it. All right. I just took a peek at the clock. We have gone through our, uh, our allotted time. So I got to push us into the quick question round. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right. Starts with books. I am a big bookie. I've amended it actually since I first started asking this question. Usually, usually I say, what are the two books recommendations that you could give? One for real estate, one for general life wisdom. But I'm going to say any type of media that you consume, be it uh, podcasts, you know, YouTube, whatever. What are your two recommendations? Um, one for general life wisdom and one for real estate specific. I, you know, I think the same one, 10X by Grant Cardone is the latest book that I've made more of a, of a textbook for me to read from. I think just the mentality that whatever problem you're having, just overwhelm it and, and try to be 10 times better and, and you'll find some way to improve things. So I would say that's, you know, my most current one. And if I can cheat a little bit and say within the probate field, uh, I would say buy your state probate code and read it. Uh, it's amazing to me how many people are in a business and think they're an expert at something. And, you know, the books online at Amazon, it's not that complicated. It's all in English. And, and it's amazing the things I've learned. I've probably made ten or $15,000 in commissions that other agents wouldn't have even asked for because I knew the probate code rules, brought the book to the hearing, showed the judge, and they agreed with me. So I would say whatever business you're in, get the actual textbook on it and learn it and learn the rules. I love it. 
All right. How about for, Oh, actually you did it 10 X with, from Grant Cardone. I, that is a great recommendation. Um, I've, I've read like half of it and then I, I don't, I can't remember what happened, but I haven't finished it, but I do remember. I really like the ideas. So great recommendation. And he does um, audio version of it on, on YouTube and get for free as well. There's a, you know, in his voice. So I like YouTube audiobooks as a way to kind of uh, listen to things while I'm doing my work. I actually didn't know there were audiobooks on YouTube. That's pretty cool. There, there you go. All right. Um, next question. This one is habits. Habits are the foundation of our life. So if you could point to one thing that you do day in and day out that you feel contributes the most to your overall health, well being, and happiness, what would that be? I swim on an adult swim team and I reoriented my business day. I was going to work four days a week instead of five, but instead I cut out midday, which is a little decadent, 1130, swim 12 to one with a swim team. Um, I'm in Southern California, so the weather's almost always good at noon. Uh, and so I swim every day and that gives me the energy. It, it, it clears my mentality, uh, helps me be emotionally ready to go, physically ready to go. So for me, it's swimming uh, and, and taking the time and making that my, my business day is structured around that every day, five days a week and then on Sunday as well. Yep. I love it, man. I'm going to second that one. Exercise is the number one thing for me too. Um, and I, I'm actually, I've been, you know, playing around with the times that I exercise. Sometimes I do like six in the morning. Sometimes I do, um, I was doing noon and three and I really like the noon time because it's like, I get my, my work done in the morning and then I can kind of have a break and I, you know, get there and I clean or clear my mind, get some exercise in. Um, so I'm with you there. I used to start at five 30 before they started because I get it in every day, but it was like drudgery. But you go at noon, it's just so pleasant for the yeah. most part here in Southern California. So Yeah, the, the, everybody's about getting those 5.30 a.m. workouts. I did it for a while, but it's just like, it, it just kind of sucked. I like the, yeah. I like the noon, noon ones better. Yeah. Um, all right, moving on. This one is best habit. All right, so your younger self. So if you could go back to the Bill who had no experience in real estate, go back to him, look him in the eye, give him one piece of advice moving forward. Uh, richest man in Babylon, read it, live it from the very beginning. You know, I think that living within your means and putting money, uh, uh, excess money into a work for you over time, if you start when you're 20 or 30, you're going to be wealthy. There's no way around that fact. Uh, and then really protecting that money uh, from a young age. I, I thought it was, you know, I made a lot of money when I was young and lost it all because I was aggressive and you think you're going to live forever. But I, I do think the rich man in Babylon makes clear the kind of the, the pattern that we're supposed to um, live on less than we make and find some way to make that work. Yep. That's funny. I literally just uh, finished that book. I took, I did a due diligence trip down to Texas and on the flight, I read it small book, but it was, uh, it was good. It's just, it's like dumb, simple advice. It's just save 10% don't, and then invest it with people who aren't, you know, who know what they're doing and it, you know, right. it makes sense, but it's, right. it is tried and true, uh, advice. So great, right. great recommendation. Um, and that leads us to the last question. Second, to last question. Uh, Oh man, I lost my place. I do this every time because I have three screens and the one on the left is where all the questions are. And I look and then I lose my place. Um, you've given us a lot of great advice. So I'm sure people out there want to reach out, say hi. What is the best way for them to do that? So my website is the LA probate expert.com, the T H E L A Los Angeles probate expert.com. And then if you want to see weekly, I do a program on probate called probate weekly. You can find it at probate weekly.com. Uh, I host it um live on youtube on zoom we stream it to uh, youtube and facebook and also the past episodes are all on youtube as well all right so that is the la probate expert.com i will put that in the you in the show notes so if you guys want to reach out to bill say hi you know learn a little bit about probate check that out click on the little more in the description it'll pop down the full description and there you can find his url other than that bill thank you very much for hopping on the show today okay thanks so much for the pleasure let's do it again absolutely and for everybody who's here with me today, thank you guys for showing up. You are the reason that we do this. So if you have any questions whatsoever, reach out to me, Gabe, at the real estate investing club.com. Other than that, hope you guys have a great week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode as much as I enjoyed putting it on and were able to pull some actionable advice that you can apply in your own investing today in the field. Before you go, we have a gift for you. If you're a new investor looking to get started or an established investor looking to invest, take your investing to the next level, I've created an ebook just for you available on our website. This ebook, ebook will cover how I was able to create both active and passive income in real estate with very little money to start with. In it, I will address the three most often cited obstacles new and veteran investors run into by showing you how to find deals that are actually deals, 
how to finance a deal with little to no money down and how to exit those deals for maximum value. And if you get the ebook today, I am throwing in a bundle of bonuses, seven of them to be exact. The first one will be the off-market lead generation blueprint, which will take you through the exact systems and processes we use to generate off-market leads like like clockwork, which is the most important skill when it comes to creating wealth in real estate. The second bonus is the A to Z REI systems and vendors guide, which will allow you to peek under the hood of our business and see the exact tools, systems, and even the vendors we use to see the success that we do. And the third bonus is the top 100 best performing keywords pack, which is which will give you the exact keywords we use to target motivated sellers online using PPC ads. The fourth bundle is, or the first fourth bonus is our contracts bundle for wholesaling and renting real estate, which will give you access to all the contracts we use in the field to execute all different types of transactions. After that is the investors quick analysis calculator and offer tool, which will allow you to quickly calculate whether a deal is an actual deal and will allow you to create an offer automatically with, from those calculations. This is a lot of uh, a lot of bonuses that I said. I'm just going to keep going down the list. Number six is the investor's daily success tracker, which is a tracker you can use to ensure you are taking the right actions day in and day out to reach your financial goals in real estate. And the last bonus is the wholesalers template for quick assignment cash, which will give you the templates we use to present our wholesale deals professionally and efficiently to our buyers. Whew, that is a bundle. So it's a mouthful. You get all of those bonuses for free when you download the ebook. All we charge is the admin cost to run the show. So if you're interested in the ebook and the bonus bundle, head on over to the website at therealestateinvestingclub.com. Click on get the ebook bundle at the top of the page to take advantage of that deal. And with that said, I hope you have a fantastic day and even better week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.